welcome to day eight of the 30 day coding challenge here with CS and math. Uh, I wanted to start off by talking about computational thinking a little bit more this morning. And uh, the idea here is that, um, well, let me just jump to this definition. It's the human ability to formulate problems so that their solutions can be represented as computational steps or algorithms that will be executed by a computer. So it's really important to understand that the human ability of thinking and doing science and math and other uh, extremely important disciplines, we are trying to partner that with computing, right? In a way that the, we can help let the computer be our, um, our aid and help us problem solve. And that's really what we're trying to do here. Now, that definition is pretty broad. We tried to give some pillars uh, when we teach it and we learned this from, um, a cohort of a strong uh, company called Code Savvy in Minnesota, and they said um, break it down into some some categories: uh, decomposition, abstraction, algorithmic thinking, and pattern recognition. And last time we focused on uh, just decomposing the structure of a basic graphing calculator. So we are going to continue that. We are going to actually focus on pattern recognition today. And for pattern recognition, we're actually going to give you some code for the first time. So if you go down in the description of this video, you're going to find a link to this document. So I'm going to let you get set up, go to Trinket, get set up there if you're not already, and go to the description and get yourself on this document. Okay, if you got on here, so it's critically important that you try with students also, if you're going to give them code, to have them predict what that code is going to do. So there's some stuff in here that we haven't exactly done, even if you've done all the challenges. Now, depending on your background, you might know what they do, but if you don't, it's actually quite okay. You can look through the, the code and try to make a prediction before ever executing it. So make sure that you uh, do that and do that with your kids if you ever are going to give them code. Now, this stuff we did with the axes, we could keep that in here. I'm actually going to delete it out for today, and I recommend that you do Control A and select all that code and just paste in this new code just to keep it focused on what we're doing we can always add the other code back in okay so we just pasted ours in a google doc right so in a google doc we just pasted yes you know, the code from day one and we recommend that you do the same so what happens when we execute it well it makes some hor uh, sorry, sorry some vertical lines so i want you to look through as it's suggested in this document after you paste it um, notice that it's using this set position. Yesterday we used go to, t dot go to. This is the same thing, set the x, y position or go to. They do the same thing. So at 60 lines of code, the program is not very efficient in what it does. Could you make it better? Question one, what values seem to be staying the same? Staying constant. What values seem to be changing? Dynamic. So these usually call up uh, the need for a variable. And we can talk about that here in a second as you look through the code. Now, notice I didn't tell you what the pattern was. That's really, really important. I don't want to rob your, your brain of that. And don't rob your kids of it either. So first of all, you probably said, oh, well, it looks like these X values are, first of all, here staying the same within each of these um, four structures. So then these are just opposites, right? Then it seems like each one of the X's is just going up by 40 and the y's are staying the same right the x comes first and then the y so we could actually capture that very quickly we could capture that pattern and let me show you a recommendation as to how you can do that now because all of these um, four lines are the exact same structure we can actually delete out everything except for one line and these values that are dynamic that are changing i can again assign them a variable like um, because it's starting on the left, I'm going to call it left start. And I don't know if you noticed, but it, the pattern didn't actually start over here at negative 200. So I'm going to put that in there. So I'm going to put negative 200. And then I'm just going to delete this out. And I'm going to assign it a variable name so that it can change. We'll call it left start. And then this is the same value. So we just call that also left start. Okay, now we could make a variable for this one too be, because um, they are opposites. Let's just keep it that for now. So get that code cut. Now, um, if we run this, notice that it is going to make a line. You can't hardly see it, but it's on the left. There's a thin line over there. Um, <clears throat> this 
is something we just want to loop over and over. Now before we use the for loop, let's use a different loop called a while loop. And a while loop just continues until a condition is met. So we're going to say we're going to continue looping this until left, sorry, left start is, um, so while left start is less than uh, 200, would probably work. Maybe I'll space that out so it looks decent. So while left start is less than 200, colon, let's loop this. So I'm going to tab that over. Now notice nothing would change if you ran this, but it, but the loop is the code here in this line 12 is correct. So what we need to do though is change it. So then I would say let's uh, increment left start. Remember our pattern that we recognized, left start plus equals is an easy way to increment it. You could say left start equals left start plus 40, but this is a basic way to just bump that or increment that up. If you wanted to increment it down, you'd change it to a minus. And there you go. So what it's doing is it's looping through until, until uh, or I should say while the left start is less than 200 because that's the far side. You know, I want to include that 200 though. So I'm going to put less than or equal to and run that again. And then notice how it puts the last line in there. Well, we're getting up here on time. So this is how you vertically grid. Uh, I challenge you to just copy this code. You have to create another variable that's not left start. Maybe call it down start. And see if you couldn't write some code that would do it up. Okay, so notice how I put this comment in here, vertical grid. I'm going to start uh, one down here that says horizontal grid. And then just paste in that same structure. Uh, I just copied this code here and pasted it down here. Uh, I'm going to call this down start. And uh, what you'd notice is if, if you're doing the grid uh, with horizontal lines, it's the height that would be constantly changing, right? So you actually need the variable on the, on the y value. The x values actually start all the way to the left, like negative 200, and go all the way to positive 200 pixels. So I'm going to change those first. And then I'm going to change this to down start, which I'm also going to start at negative 200. So down start, and this one here would become down start. These don't have to be called this, by the way. I don't. It doesn't matter what you call them. That's just what I came up with. So now if I run this. Oh, I didn't change the while loop, right? So I, this, uh, the left start is already at 200, so this isn't executing. So we got to do down start. In, in the while loop structure. And there you have it. So we've gridded the plane using pattern recognition. And when you find pattern recognition, a lot of times you'll use looping and many times uh, create functions for those loops. All right. Thank you guys for joining us. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, uh, share out on Twitter with the hashtags uh, CSMMath and hashtag 30 day coding challenge. Thanks.